Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Tunawakaribisha nyote kwa ibada yetu ya leo asubuhi ya leo. Tunawakaribisha hata mkiwa nyumbani tukaweze mkaweze kuungana na sisi tunapoenda kumwabudu Mungu. Unaweza kifungua kinywa chako na ukaweze kumwabudu Bwana umwambie akuongoze. Baba tunaomba tuongoze katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Tunaomba kuongozwa na wewe katika jina la Yesu Kristo mwana wa Mungu. Father we pray Jehovah that you may lead us O King of all glory in the name of Jesus O God. Father we worship your holy name. We declare that you are worthy O God. We declare that you are worthy O King of kings and Lord of lords. Holy are you Jesus. Worthy are you O God. Even as we worship you as we worship you you oh god may you come down oh king of kings and lord of lords father we pray for your mighty power oh god even those who are seated at home oh king of kings we pray father for your power to be upon them oh king of kings that their lives father will not be the same again oh father in the name of jesus oh god tunasema kuna kama wewe mfalme Who 
utani tangulia sitaogopa chochote utani tangulia sitaogopa chochote kwa mkono wako kweli umenibariki kwa mkono Chagua kabla sijazaliwa mimi Ukanichagua nabi wa mataifa yote Yesu Utanitangulia sitaogopa chochote Utanitangulia Sitaoko pa chochote kamwe Kwa mkono wako kweli umenibariki Kwa mkono wako kweli umenibariki baraka zako Baraka zako baraka
from Faith Harvest Church, Juja. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you into a broadcast. So wherever you're watching us from or listening, we want to take this opportunity to welcome you into this uh, service. And we pray that as we, as we hear from the Lord and as we worship him, he's going to minister to your heart as he does the same to my heart. I want us to uh, turn our hearts and our minds to the Bible. As you already know, uh, we, we've been doing a study on the book of Ecclesiastes uh, on a sermon series entitled An Empty Life. And we've been talking about finding significance, uh, satisfaction, and the meaning of life. And, and we've been drawing our lessons from uh, the, the, the Ecclesiastes and, and from the words of the preacher. And last time we did chapter uh, 1 and chapter 2. Today we'll be doing chapter 3. And I want us to read even as we, uh, we pray, as, as we uh, focus our hearts on God's word. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you this day and we pray that you may forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquity. And as we fix our hearts and our minds on you, this is our cry. This is a prayer of our heart. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Amen. And I read Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to, weep, uh, to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to, to sue, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. The Bible is telling us that for everything, for everything under the heavens, there, there, there is a season. There is, there is a season to be born and a season to die, to die. And as I read this passage of scripture, my heart and my mind is drawn to a similar passage, a similar verse which allow us to read in the book of Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 when I read, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest time, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. The words I've just read today and now were spoken by the Lord directly 
to Noah and his family after the end of the flood. And the Lord is telling them, as long as the earth exists, seed time and harvest time, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Basically, the Lord is telling them, as long as there is the earth, there will always be seasons. And the book of Ecclesiastes is telling us there is a time for everything. There is a season for everything under the heavens. And it gives us an example. And the verse 8 says, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. And every time I think about the seasons of our lives, that I cannot run away from the fact that there will be seasons in my life. There will be seasons in your life. There will be times when things are doing well. There will be seasons of plenty. There will be seasons of lack. And we must agree, during this time when we are having the a pandemic ranging over, this is a different season. It's a, it's, it's a different period like we've never had before in our, in our time, maybe in a different generation. And when I think about seasons, there are many issues that run through my mind. And I know for many of us, we can say the same thing. One of the things that run through my mind when I think about seasons and times under the heavens is knowing what season I find myself to be in. What season am I currently in? That for me is, is, is a big issue when I consider seasons. And I, I would like to know what season I find myself in. And I know there are those seasons that are easy for us to understand and to tell. For example, a season to be born, a, a season to die. Those are seasons we can easily see. It's sometimes not easy for me and you to know what seasons we are going through. And for many of us, it's not an easy place to be at, even for me as an individual. And beyond knowing what time or what season you find yourself at, another issue that I find critical to seasons is how do I respond? How do I behave? What decisions do I make in the season that I find myself? Because you, you, you will agree with me if you make decisions that are not in sync or are in line with the season you find yourself to be in, you'll basically be out of sync with those seasons. If you make decisions that are not in line with the opportunities that God provides in a particular season, you'll find yourself missing out on those opportunities. And for me, there's that second issue of how do I need to respond in the season I find myself in. Once I've known that season, it's very critical for me and you. Another issue for me that I find critical pertaining to seasons is needing help in the season that I find myself in. I mean, you'll agree with me, many of us need help through the course, the general course of our lives. We need help, especially when the seasons are not good. A season to be, to, to mourn is a season where we need help. And when I think about these three issues and many others, because of time we cannot be able to look at them, I, 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 I want to look into scripture and ask myself, how do I respond to three, three, these three issues and many other issues that we are not able to discuss because of time? And I think about it in line with scripture, and my heart is drawn to, to the words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. And the Apostle Paul says, And I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and both to suffer need. He says in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I think about the words of the apostle, the apostle is saying, this is how I have dealt with the various seasons of my life, that I know how to abound. I know how to live in plenty. I also know how to live in lack. I know how to have so much, and I know how to not have so much. And he says, this is my secret. This is a secret that I have found that has made me be able to deal with the seasons of life. He says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And for my three issues, when you consider them prudently, you're able to see that Christ alone is the only one who can be able to allow me and you to know the seasons of our lives, what season we are in. Christ alone, ladies and gentlemen, can give us the wisdom and the understanding to be able to conduct ourselves in a way and a manner that in sync with the seasons. He who created the heavens and the earth, he who says in the book of Genesis 8.22 that as long as the earth exists, seed time and harvest, there will always be seasons. He who commands those seasons into place is the only person who can be able to guide me and you to know what season of our lives we find ourselves in. He is the only one who can be able to help us to respond to those seasons in a way and a manner that is fruitful for me and you and also glorifies him. And when I consider the words of the apostle, the apostle says, I can do all things, regardless of what those things are. That issue for me was, when, do I need help in the season I find? Where can I find that help? Ladies and gentlemen, Christ alone. Christ alone is the only one who can be with me and you during all the seasons of our lives. And for many of us, we believe or we think that we only need the Lord when the seasons are difficult and dire. 
and hard and painful. But I want to bring present it to you that we need the Lord throughout. We need him when the seasons are good. We need him when we are happy. We need him when we are dancing. We need him throughout all the seasons of our lives. We need him when we are mourning so that he can comfort us. We need him when there is lack in our lives so that he can continue being our source of provision. I also present it to you that me and you need the Lord even through the seasons of plenty so that we do not forget about him. So that we know with certainty that wherever we find ourselves, is it a place of success? If it is a place of being celebrated, that that success is not the work of our hands. We need the Lord through our We need the Lord even in this season where the pandemic is raging and our hearts are full of fear and we don't know what to do. We need the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. He who provides peace greater than any man can even be able to understand. When I consider seasons of our lives, Christ alone, ladies and gentlemen, is a source of wisdom to be able to handle those seasons. And when I read these words of the, uh, of the preacher, he says there will be seasons to gain and seasons to lose. Christ alone will help us to be able to deal with the seasons when we are gaining. Christ alone will give us wisdom and understanding to be able to handle with the seasons when we are losing. Christ alone will walk with me and you. Through all those seasons, through all everything that life has to offer. I mean, the psalmist says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid because you, your staff and your rod comfort me. The apostle Paul is saying, this is, this is a secret I have found to be able to live in plenty and in lack. This is the season I, this is the, this, this is the secret I have found to be able to tackle the issues of life through all the seasons that life has to offer, that I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. So for me and you, we find this encouragement that through all that life has to offer, plenty or lack, love or hate, war or peace, we can do all things in Christ Jesus through him and him alone. The preacher says in verse 9, what profit has the worker from, what, from that which in which he labors? And verse 9 reminds me and you of, of numerous verses in chapter 2 when the preacher says the pursuit of labor in itself is vanity of vanity. And he continues with that same, same attitude when he's saying, what profit is there for a man when he labors all this? It is still vanity of vanity. And it speaks to me and you who give our hearts and our souls to labor, to work, hoping that that labor and that work will give us 100% satisfaction. And all we, all we find sometimes is hardship, and pain and satisfaction that is only temporal. And it speaks to me and you to know that even as we labor, we should do it in the Lord for his good pleasure because it is only in the Lord that we can find satisfaction and 100% of it both here on this earth and in the life to come. The preacher says in verse 10, and I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are, are to be occupied. He, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts except no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to the end. The preacher is saying that he, he, God has made everything beautiful in its own time. And it speaks to me and you as we journey through the seasons of life, that wherever we find ourselves, we should be able to ask the Lord to give us the grace to be able to see beauty in everything, in every season that life has to offer. We are able to see beauty in the days of our youth and be able to use those days to be able to please the Lord and to be able to serve him. We should see beauty in the days of being old. We should see beauty wherever we find ourselves. We should not live our lives hoping that we... It's only in tomorrow. It is only by another week coming by that we will be able to find happiness and joy. We should be able to tell the Lord to give us joy and happiness in every season we find ourselves. We should see beauty when our children are young, knowing that in years to come, they will be gone away. We should see beauty in our labor once we, we, we give our labor to the Lord and for him. And he goes on to say, but God has also put eternity in the hearts of men. That me and you, have eternity waiting for us. And it's good for me and you as we live out our lives, as we go through the seasons of life, to be able to constantly think about eternity. Where will I spend my eternity? It is good for me and you as we sojourn in this land, as we appreciate that we sojourn us, that we are people away from home, are mindful of eternity. As we make the decisions of our life, as we are challenged by what the world has to offer as we are tempted it is good for us in our back of our hearts and our minds to know that God has put eternity in my heart and in your heart and how will you respond with the thoughts of eternity will you live your life 
pleasing the Lord so that one day you can stand before him and you hear these words, welcome good and faithful servant. Will you be mindful of what you are told on that day of judgment, that great and terrible day for those, all those who have rejected the Lord? It is good for me and you to have mentality, the, the eternal, eternal mentality in our hearts so that we can be able to live our lives in a way and a manner that pleases the Lord, so that we can be ready, so that our oil lamps can be full as we await the coming back of the bride, of the bridegroom. Verse 12 says, and I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is a gift of the Lord. The psalm, I mean, the, the preacher goes on to say that there is nothing better than a man to be able to eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of his toil. But he goes on to say what he's been saying in chapter 2, that even the ability to be able to enjoy the fruits of your toil is a gift of the Lord. And those words ring high in my mind and deeper in my heart that it is only the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, who can allow you to enjoy the, 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 the labor, your toil. That even, the, even enjoying it is a blessing of the Lord. So for me and you find ourselves in that place of enjoyment or even not enjoying, it is only in the Lord that that blessing of enjoying the fruits of our toil can be found. The preacher goes on to say in verse 14, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. God does it so that men should fear him before him. That which is has already been. And that which is to be has already been. And God requires an account of what is in the past. And verse 14 and 15 speaks about God's sovereignty. That God does what he wants, when he wants, and how he wants it. And it's, it's, it's a good discipline for me and you who are believers to be able to find and, and, and attach to our hearts. That God does what he wants to do. And whatever he does stands forever. And when we think about God's sovereignty, we are able to go through the seasons of life in a way and a manner with our hearts fixed on him. So we do not complain when it seems as if it's taken too long because we know he has a good plan. He is sovereign. He is never, he's neither late or too early. His time is the best time. We don't complain when we go before him with, with what life has to offer and he does not answer us as we should be answered. Because we know when we think about his sovereignty, we know that he still has good plans for us. And whatever he achieves to do, whatever he stands out to do cannot be changed. We have this confidence that regardless of what we go through, God is still on the throne. And when we appreciate him for his sovereignty, when we rest and just wait upon him and say we will be still and wait for his salvation, we will be still and wait for he, what he has to do, what he has to offer. Because whatever the Lord has to offer is permanent and no one can be able to change it. And the psalmist, I mean, and the, the preacher asserts these words about God's sovereignty, that God does whatever he wants to do, that God does what he wants to do when he wants to do and how he wants to do it. And he does all this for his glory and for the praise of his name. It just says in verse 16, Moreover, I saw under the sun, in the place of judgment, wickedness was there. And in the place of righteousness, iniquity was there. And the psalmist is talking about, I mean, the, the preacher is talking about looking for righteousness, looking for justice. And he says, the place where I had hoped I would find justice or judgment, I found wickedness. In the place where I thought people would be righteous, in which it was found in that place. And he said in his heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time for every work, for every purpose and for every work. And me and you who live in a world that is fallen away. Me and you who live in a world whereby the justice systems are not good enough. Me and you who live in a world whereby those who should be seeking the Lord and living a life that glorifies him. Sometimes find fault in these people. Where iniquity is found where righteousness should be. I mean, and we don't know what, how to respond in a world like that. We don't know how to respond if we live in a country whereby money is lost and 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 and. and, and the justice system is not fast enough or, or we feel like justice is not being done. And, and the challenges that come from that kind of attitude. This is how this, the preacher responds. The preacher responds by saying, I know that God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. And this is an encouragement for me and you. 
that at the end of it all, it doesn't matter how far and how much the people who continue to do wickedness keep running, that God will bring judgment to those people who are wicked. But this is also a warning for me and you to be able to pick up so that if we are the ones who are caught in judgment, so that we can work out our salvation with fear and trembling, so that the judgment that is in place cannot be your judgment and my judgment. And the some preacher says, regardless of where I find wickedness, God will bring to judgment all the things that are done. Because there is a time for every purpose and a time for every work. The preacher goes on to say in verse 18, I said in my heart, concerning the conditions of the son of man, God tests them that they may, that they may see, that they, may see they, them, they themselves are like animals. For what happens to the son of man also happens to animals. One thing befalls them. One, as one dies, so dies the other. Surely they are all they all have one breath. Man has no advantage over animals for all his vanity. The preacher is comparing animals to men. And, and as I was saying in, in the previous sermon, when you listen to the preacher, the preacher seems to, in his pursuit of satisfaction, to have seen a lot of things that were vanity for him. And he's even saying there is no much difference for the life of a human being and the life of animals. And he says, because all of them finally will be caught up in death. And there's truth in what the preacher is saying. In the part whereby all of us will be caught up in death. And it is good for me and to you to know that as we pursue the things we have to pursue, that from dust we came and from dust we shall return. It is good for me and you to live our lives in a way and a manner, considering that one day we will not be on this earth. It is good for me and you to consider that indeed we are sojourners. We are men away from home. And the preacher says in verse 20, all go to one place, all from dust and all dust shall, they shall return. And in verse 21 he asks, who knows the spirit of the sons of men which goes upward and of the spirit of animals which goes down? And me and you today have an answer to that question. We know that our spirits, once we are done with our time on this earth, are caught up into eternity. And into eternity we stand before God and give an account for ourselves. We At least we can be able to answer the question that the preacher is bringing. And I pray my heart and your heart can be quickened to consider eternity. To know that in our hearts, eternity is there. To know that eternity is beckoning for me and you. To know that at the end of it all, it does not matter how much we pursued on this earth. How we lived out our lives on this earth will, will determine where we spend our eternity. It is good for me and you even as we consider what the preacher is saying. The pursuit of toil, the pursuit of happiness and joy, the pursuit of those things the world has to offer. It is good for me and you to have our hearts and our minds fixed on the words of Jesus Christ to his disciples. And he tells them, what will it profit a man to gain the entire world and lose his own soul? What will it profit a man to have the businesses, to enjoy pleasure, to pursue wisdom? What will it profit a man to be rich, renowned, a man of repute, and lose the one thing that really matters. And as we consider these words of the preacher, we think about our own eternity. And I think about the words of the Apostle Paul. He says, and I beat my body. And I put it, I, I beat my body and, and bring it to subjection. So that after preaching to all you, I may not be disqualified. And I pray that me and you would put eternity into consideration. Even as we go through the seasons of life, seasons of happiness and joy, we must do so with eternity in our hearts. Even as we go through the seasons of happiness and increase and favor and open doors, we can still have the thoughts of eternity. As we go through what life has to offer, we can still know that we are not here forever. And eternity is beckoning. And my prayer and the prayer of my heart is that we will be able to focus our hearts and our minds on the master. Because Christ alone, ladies and gentlemen, can be able to tell us the seasons where our lives find ourselves at. Christ alone, ladies and gentlemen, can give us the wisdom and understanding to be able to navigate the seasons of our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, Christ alone can give help for all the seasons that we find ourselves in. But above all, Christ alone, who died on Calvary, can give the opportunity, and him alone, for us to be able to escape the judgment that is coming, for us to be able to not lose our soul.
So we live our lives in thoughts of eternity. So we ask him to guide us through the seasons of life. And the preacher says in verse 22, even as we complete, So I perceive that nothing is better than a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his heritage. For who can bring him to see what will happen after him? And the preacher is saying, so I have think, after thinking about all these things, I have perceived in my heart that it is better for a man to rejoice in his own works, for that is his own heritage. And it's good for us as we read verse 22 to consider the other verses we've read before, that even rejoicing in your own works even enjoying the fruit of your labor is a gift of the Lord. Think about it. Christ alone is the God of all seasons. Christ alone shows me and you how to conduct ourselves in the seasons of life. Christ alone gives me and you grace to be able to go through the seasons of life. Christ alone, ladies and gentlemen, offers solace for those who feel who live in a world like ours where there is, that is fallen and there is no justice. Christ alone promises eternal life. And finally, Christ alone, ladies and gentlemen, allows me and you to toil and to enjoy the fruits of our toil. There is nowhere we can find satisfaction. There is nowhere else we can find full 100% satisfaction apart from Christ alone. And I want to speak to you who says, I don't know Christ. I don't have him in my heart. My eternity is, is in disarray. I'm afraid. I'm walking the road of losing my own soul. And you're saying, preacher man, it is me that you're speaking to. It is me who is living my life out of Christ. It is me who is pursuing satisfaction in toil and labor. It is me who is pursuing satisfaction in all those other things out of Christ. And I would like you to make this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I see my wrong. I repent of my sins. I ask that you forgive me. I ask that you save me and you make me yours. From today, I receive you as my personal Savior and Lord. And I pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you're out there and you have a special need and you'd love us to pray with you. Let us pray together. And Lord, we pray for your people. Wherever they watch us from, wherever they listen from, dear Lord, how we pray that you and you alone, dear Lord, will be seen in their lives. How we pray that you would give them wisdom and understanding to understand the seasons they find themselves at. How we pray that you would give them the wisdom and understanding and the grace, dear Lord, to be able to conduct themselves according to your will in the seasons they find themselves at. We also pray that you would give them wisdom, O oh Lord, and you would give them the grace, dear Lord, that you would walk with them through the seasons of their lives. So we also pray, dear Father, that you would give them the grace to live their lives in line with eternity, with eternity in their hearts and in their minds. How we also pray, dear Lord, for those who be sick, that you would heal them. Those who are in need, that you would provide for their needs. Those, dear Father, who are in one issue or another, that you would stretch forth your arm that is not short and touch them and bring change and transformation and salvation. For we pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you would want to, want to reach out to us and you want for prayer or for counseling. Please reach out to us on the number that will be displayed at the bottom of this screen. You can also reach out to us on uh, all the other platforms that is Facebook, on Instagram, and even on WhatsApp. And I know the Lord is going to bless us even as we're able to, to speak to you and, and minister to you. We continue uh, asking us who are not able to join us in our physical places of worship uh, to consider giving to the Lord, even during this time, your tithes and offering, we have displayed an, a pay bill number or at the bottom or at the top of this screen. Uh, please uh, send your, 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 your gifts, your offering and your tithes and your love offerings to that number. And on the account, you can display whether it's the tithe or offering. And the Lord is going to bless you even as you do that. All our churches remain open. That, that is in Rosambo, in Juja, in Muirigo, and even in Utawala. We are basically meeting and are doing so in line with the regulations that the government has given us. As we come to the end of our service, we want to bless the Lord for having you and for joining us. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May the Lord turn his countenance towards you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Shalom. Until we meet again. Amen.